Right, if you watched my last video, you'd have seen a new setup which I did on my MyFed ML7 so that I was able to perfectly regrind spot drills, centre drills, and very small drills on the lathe. And on that video, I said that you could incorporate this idea or this setup on many other lathes as well. So today I'm going to show you how you can do exactly the same thing or nearly exactly the same thing on the Chinese mini lathe and you'll be able to regrind all of your spot drills, centre drills and small drills on the lathe and it's a dead easy design and setup. All you need is a plate of steel which is 12mm thick um, and I've used it for the um, matchy fit gib type tool post which you can actually get for the um, Chinese mini lathe is the 250 dash treble zero but you could also use the same design for the Dixon type tool post if you have that one so all that you need to do with this plate is to drill three holes here for the allen screws um, these screw into the um, compound slide disc so it's just clearance holes for the six millimeter allen screws and then you drill a hole right through the center um, and this locates on the lug on that disc and then I simply drilled and tapped for a 10 millimeter studding which came with the matchy fit tool post and all as you need then is a tool post drill like I've made here and these tool post drills are dead easy to make I've got like a bearing in each end of those but you don't really need a bearing if you have a close fitting spindle the spindle size for my housing is 8 millimeter and then I've got the um, collet chucks of various different sizes and these um, fit the 8mm stainless steel bar. You can just buy it a ground um, stainless steel bar. And they push into these uh, collet chucks and secure with a grub screw on the side here. And in this demonstration, I'm going to be using the ER20 collet chuck to hold this spot drill here. The only other thing that you need is one of these round vices. Um, you can get them on eBay, I think RDG do them. And a piece of square bar here, which is 12 millimeter and fits into the um, tool holders on the matchy fit tool post. And this one simply holds the housing. It's secured to the bar with two Allen screws. But in this case, you take out one of the Allen screws at the back here so that you can tilt the vise. So now I'll go over to the lathe and show you the setup and how it all works. So firstly, I remove the tailstock and get the one out of the way to give myself some more room. I then wind back the compound slide to reveal the six millimeter securing screws and take those out. I always keep the screws with the compound slide because they are ground to a certain length so that they don't damage the inside of the cross slide. And make sure the cross slide is clean. The new screws for the 12 millimeter plate are 25 millimeter overall length. You need to check this when you're um, screwing something onto the um, cross slide because like I say, if you um, go too deep with the screws, they can actually um, mark the inside of the cross slide uh, when they ground out. So um, these ones, like I say, they're 25 millimeter long, including the head, as long as you don't put a socket in there for the head. So that one goes on there, put the screws in, and I've marked the position of the angle already that I had to make it quicker, and tighten those ones up. So 
So the angle of the plate on the cross slide doesn't matter. It's really just for positioning and getting it um, correct uh, for um, clearance from this hand or whatever. And then the tool post goes on. And just nip that one up because you'll need to adjust the angle for the tool. And then wind the carriage back and put in the spindle with the ER collet chuck on it. And the spot drill is already locked into that ER collet chuck and you don't need to take it out after um, the grinding when you're actually doing the grinding because you can wind back the carriage and take out the spindle uh, to examine it like that and do a regrind if necessary. And then you only take the tool out at the end of the um, grinding when the tool is finished. So now I have my diamond wheel set up in the ER40 collet chuck. It's a very fine diamond wheel. I think it's about 600 grit. And I cover the ways up with kitchen tissue cloth. Don't use any other cloth because they could um, or that could get caught up in the spindle or whatever. Just used a tissue type cloth and I stick this to the ways using like a rare earth magnet. So I put a magnet on the other side as well and this protects the ways from any um, debris which comes off of the tool or the diamond lepping wheel. And I forgot to mention that you can get these cup wheels on eBay. And then I bring the carriage in, making sure that the um, tool is in the centre of the diamond lapping wheel or cup wheel. You can adjust the cross slide to achieve that. And put the cutting edge on the front of the wheel there and then lock up the tool post. And you can see there that I've put a DTI clock at the back there so that I can come in each time to zero or whatever on one side and then do the other side and I know that I'll get each cutting edge or angle exactly the same. And a few people got confused here on my last video because they thought that I would just come in and touch on with the angle set like this. But there's a certain amount of skill involved in this part here. When you have the diamond wheel running or rotating, what you do is slightly rotate the tool like that. And that will put the clearance on the back of the tool, just like on the original one. And when you um, do a new tool that's just uh, gone basically on the end here, dull, and that's all they normally do, you can blue up the end or use a marker pen and black up the end here. And you can do the first pass of the tool on the diamond cup wheel like that to see that you're following exactly the same profile on that tool and adjust the angles or whatever to suit. So remember it's not just coming in straight and touching on like that. There is a certain amount of rotation to get the profile right and the clearance right. And I have found that you can get a perfect grind on these tools with this setup, just like a new tool. In fact, on the last setup with the Mifid ML7, I held two up together and I could not tell the difference between the two. So it's a great method of actually resharpening these tools. And then use the fastest spindle speed on the Chinese mini lathe. I put a bit of spray oil on the cup wheel.
and it's as easy as that. You can actually feel when you're doing the correct amount of rotation. And for those that didn't understand the last video, I'll show a close-up of the rotation so you can see exactly what I'm doing. And there you'll see a perfect regrind. And if you use this method and this setup, you'll save yourself a lot of money. And that's because you won't have to buy any new spot drills again. Also, like I said, you can actually sharpen center drills. And the very tiny drills on this um, setup. And you're also able to regrind spot drills that are made of carbide or any other drills that are made of carbide so that's about it i hope you enjoyed the video and have a go at this setup and see what you think